Hello, sometimes Camtasia is not your friend and does not save the recording. So I have to do a replay on this game. And that's fine because I think there's a lot of things I want to explain anyway. So let's go. I w obviously chose to play first because even though he's, he has the potential to stall, uh, my, I really want to get on the get out of the gates very fast. So I start with the law bring. This hand looks fine. It's a kind of awkward with two free drops, but that's how it rolls. And the fling is kind of awkward, but it's really a card you want to use to finish off the game. So draw another mountain, which is fine. I would love to draw a, gob draw a goblin piker there, but I draw it next turn, unfortunately. So now the curve isn't as optimal. And it goes with the Mirror Glutri, which is going to be proved to be a very good card in this game. Because as, as it stands now, my Lawkeeper stops his Phantasmal Beard to get online. So now I drop the Bananish Veteran. And he has one of many other adepts here. Which is a very good card against us since it tra trades with almost all of our creatures and it gets the tempo he needs to get to the late game. So it's a really good card here. Here I could uh, I choose to drop the veteran and the fire sling. And the veteran, as I stated in an earlier game, the veteran gets in for free while the hellhound can get in for more if you really have the support but as of right now my man is kind of tied up so and he gets his looting on and as I said he discards a phantasmal dragon which is a total dead card right now so the loot will essentially draw him a card already I mean it really didn't but it really helped him in that he got rid of a total dead card and he attacks, which is kind of interesting. I mean, he can't block anyway, but um, I thought he was going to drop something and then maybe double block this veteran. Like if he drops a two power guy. But he wants to get his beat on, so he's kind of optimistic about his hand here. And he has another error that wishes blow up. So I go with a hellhound here because I want to tap something. I, uh, I mean, I might as well since uh, yeah, it could get an at attack in and we might draw uh, Gorhon Minotaurs. So if I drop the veteran, it might be slightly better, but this way we get to tap something too. And he loots again, this time getting rid of an island. So now he enters his combat phase and I tap his guy. I don't really want to trade here in case he attacks. I mean, this way I get to tap something too, and it's kind of the same. And I mean, I can always blood first with the fire sling, maybe has ice skate or something, and plays like slot. Here comes Dean of Wish, which is always a hard card to deal with because you have to kill it or it's gonna get too much card advantage. And it's a 4 4 flyer too. Arsenal's isn't too bad, it sets up fleeing in an interesting situation, which comes up next turn. And if anyone noticed, yes, I did forgot to use my Goblin Fire Sling 
which is embarrassing, but there's nothing I can do. I mean, I have to just suck it up and admit I made a mistake. Um, so he should be at 17 right now, but that was clearly a mistake. And he gets to loot away a Phantasm uh, Beer, so already the Mirror Glure has almost drawn him two cards because he's throwing away dead cards. So he uses his gene here and he whiffs because he reveals a fireball and then X is considered to be zero. So that's a whiff for him, which is a break. Because that fireball would have been devastating. Could have uh, used it for one, killed like three guys or something. But we're still in trouble, obviously. So here, I'm setting up a fleeing situation. So I attack with Wedran, and if he double blocks, then I get to kill his two looter and adder adept. Um, I could also fling one of the blockers, but this plays around in some much better. So he blocks with both, and I'm ready to throw the arsonist at one adder adept, killing the mirror glue in the process. It's a two for two. Or three for three, honestly, because I lose three cards and he lose three cards, but I gain a lot of tempo. Sadly, he has the unsummon here, so he gets to save his Edra deck while gaining even more tempo. So, yeah. And he also loots away an unsummon, which means that his deck is really good at the bouncing <clears throat> because he has two Edra Adepts and two Unsummons. It will soon be obvious that he has three Edra Adepts. So, I still think the play is fine. But Unsummon kind of made it worse. But his board is somewhat cleared now, so we might have a chance in this game. Our uh, second law keeper is obviously completely... Unless we draw another planes, it doesn't do anything. Here he doesn't with he gets a <laughs> third adder deck, which of course is really good because as I stated before it's really good against our deck, it trades with one guy, bounces and our deck is kind of built to utilize tempo so that's really bad. And he also has divination but that doesn't really matter. The damage has already been done so to speak. So we get on the 10 here. And the Tunneler Hellhound might give us a shot, but we are trying to do that. So, I choose to play the Piker here, rather than tapping. I, I'm, that might be a mistake, but uh, I'm not so scared of him having two fireballs. I think he, the chances are he only splashes one fireball and maybe in single. So I don't, I'm not scared to go that low, so I think I want to develop my board. Here he wishes again, this time hitting a land. So that's not too bad. And he attacks with. I think uh, I have to block here with the piker. I mean, it gives me another turn. Should he kill the law keeper? And my piker isn't doing much of anyway. And he has a another error deck. And I think that's the. Uh, it is actually. He only has three adder adepts. He just uh, replayed one. He got it in his hand. So. But it's the fourth time it's getting used against us, and uh, of course. That's bad. And we have to play the law keeper, and we make it this unblockable. But then we change our mind since we have to trade here. We are firmly on the defensive, and this deck is pretty bad at being on the d defensive, so... I mean, it's either that or jump with Fire Sling, and I think it's just better to get the Adder Adept off the table. We, what are we going to do next? And we have to jump then again. So... But our shots of winning this game is kind of hoping he's totally empty, and we can start tapping his gene. But he isn't empty. He has the Skywinder Drake, which provides a lethal clock. And he also has an Amphim Cutthroat. So, 
and our deck is not set up for this situation. It can't. Uh, it is really bad at catching up. It needs uh, to be have your opponent on really low life, so you can uh, outrace it. And we can get two tappers, but it's too late. We need to shunt here. I uh, have to tap because he has two flyers. And I have only one flying block. So. I mean, if he is totally empty again, we still have a chance because we can jump a couple of turns and maybe get two tappers online. And then maybe uh, draw like a Gorhan Minotaur so we could stabilize or. That's why I'm not I'd rather champ with Tunner than the, the Fire Sling because the Fire Sling at least can give us a 5 5 if we can set it up that way. But here we uh, need to jump twice because all his creatures are lethal and I rather scoop at that point. I mean, this game is lost so I just scoop because I have to jump twice and then I don't think I have any outs whatsoever. And he still has a card. So, that was a bit of a disappointment, but still, we're gonna see you in the next drop.